Okay, so how do we help? Um, with kids with anxiety in particular, um, and especially when that anxiety is triggered by the school setting, one of the strategies that's been found to be really helpful is establishing check-ins for students who have school-based anxiety. So checking in with a trusted uh, staff member at the beginning of the day helps to kind of um, set goals for that day, goals for getting through that day, helps to address any particular worries or fears that might be um, coming on board. Also, as encouraging self-calming strategies. Um, often school counselors will have a good toolbox of basic self-calming strategies. And the trick to good self-calming strategies, we use very basic ones because we teach them to, to really, really young kids. And we'll very frequently use a three-step calming strategy. Take three deep breaths. Count backwards from five or 10 or 20 or whatever they can count up to, but, but counting or counting backwards because it requires more mental concentration. So it takes them away from the anxiety provoking cognitions more. And then um, start to teach uh, cognitive restructuring. So start to teach um, anxiety calming thoughts. So we might say to them, okay, what's something your mom says to you when you get really worried? Um, let's have you say that to yourself in your head. Okay, so a three step strategy will be then Take three deep breaths, count backwards from 10, and tell yourself, calm down, Kate, calm down, Kate, calm down, Kate, three times. And then you evaluate how you feel, and you might need to do it again. The trick to that, or any other more complicated and more sophisticated self-calming strategy, is practice. Because um, what will happen sometimes is we'll teach the strategy. We'll say, when you get nervous or when you get anxious, do this. Well, what happens when you get nervous and you get anxious? You can't think. <laughs> You can't think, and so it does not occur to you to implement a strategy, and then you can't remember what the strategy was. So the key to it is practice. So we'll have parents or school staff or paras practice the self-calming strategy every day or a couple of times a day with a highly anxious kid when they're not very anxious so that we can almost have it become habit so that they can pull it up more easily when they need it. So you encourage the self-calming strategy, and then you help to establish a safe place to do it. This is particularly important with younger kids because younger kids are really concrete. It's hard for them to do that in their head. <laughs> And so they're physically taking three deep breaths and they are counting out loud backwards from five or ten. And so they need to have kind of a safe place and a place where they can do that without it increasing their anxiety. So a safe place to, to use for self-calming and regrouping. Good communication with parents and counselors is super important. Um, we also, with anxious kids, also need to usually facilitate peer interactions because kids with any anxiety disorder tend to struggle socially. They tend to struggle socially partly because they look different. They behave different, and so they get set apart socially in a way that makes it harder for them to make friends. Um, kids who have social anxiety in particular struggle because they find themselves thinking all of those anxiety provoking thoughts about what their peers are probably thinking of them. So they tend to avoid social interactions. Use of small groups can be really helpful um, and things like circle of friends. Um, where you have like little lunchtime get togethers with a couple targeted safe peers and you just start to build those connections that you can then send out into the classroom or playground environments to support the kids. Um, whenever we can, even at a very young age, we want to try to involve students in the creation of the strategies because um, anxiety uh, feels very out of control and kids who suffer from anxiety don't have much control. So anything that they can have some control over, they're going to be more invested in and um, is going to be more successful. Um, we want to, we don't want people in their face pushing them beyond where they can go, but we also don't want a bunch of escape valves. We also don't want to encourage avoidance because we know that that will only make it worse. So we want to do everything we can to support the students, but keep them there because if they escape it, it will get worse. Parents a lot of times don't understand that, and so they see it as kind of mean because they, um, they see their kids in distress and they want the distress to go away. And so we have to be very direct to say, I get it. I, your, your baby's hurting, you don't want them to hurt, but here's the thing. If you allow them to escape it now, it will get worse. The anxiety will grow because that's how it works. Um, 
other thoughts about anxiety strategies or questions about anxiety or anything anxiety related? Any anxieties you have yourselves? Anything we can talk about? Yes. How important is it to, and I used to do this part of self-advocacy, but teaching the kids to get online and learn about the disorder so they can identify it and, you know, because a lot of times they don't know what's going on, but then when they understand what it is, they, sometimes they feel a little bit better knowing that, hey, this is a disorder I got. It's other people have it. Absolutely, and I think that that sort of normalization, that sort of education is very important. However, I don't like to send kids to the internet because there's so much stuff out there, and some of it is correct and some of it is incorrect. So we have handouts for parents and for kids, psychoeducational handouts that provide that basic information, but information that we know is accurate. And, and a lot of times, um, uh, either in the schools or in clinic, we'll sit down with kids and we'll, we'll talk to them, you know, again, like everything we're talking about, every kid's experience and presentation is a little bit different. So we'll sit down and we'll say, how does your body, when you get worried, how does your body feel? Like, how do you know you're anxious? And so we'll talk to them about their specific symptoms, like their muscles get tense, they start to sweat. So they start to recognize those early warning signs. Um, what happens for kids a lot is that by the time they cognitively register the anxiety, they're already up here. And this is true for anger, by the way, too. <laughs> you know, a lot of the same strategies. So they're already up here, which means that any of the tools we give them, they have limited ability to put them into play because they've let things, it, it, it's skipped right by them. And so teaching them to identify it early and understand what it means gives them more control over it. And you're exactly right, normalizing it. This is what your body is doing. Even a, a basic, you know, when we talk about the autonomic nervous system and fight versus flight, you know, giving them a child-friendly version of that. What your body's doing is what it's supposed to do. It's just doing it at the wrong time. And that's really normal. And a lot of people have that, and here's what we do about it. So we normalize it and we give them tools at the same time. Other thoughts? Okay. I, just, I want to say, I, yes. think that, I think it's a good idea, but it really does depend on their level of, of insight um, and thinking about what the specific anxiety is. Because if we're talking about generalized anxiety disorder, then having that access, so this kind of echoes what she's saying, but having that access can actually contribute to their anxiety. So, and this one is, um, an example that I have, but this is for a woman that we've actually had to limit her time on the internet because <laughs> it's actually contributed to her anxiety. And well, maybe I have this, maybe I have this, but I saw this was happening in this country, though. You know, so right. that's something that you really have to be aware of and be, be careful about when you're using the internet. Control the flow of information. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. 